Hey everyone, here's what you can expect from image prompting in version 5 of Midjourney. First, let me explain how there are two ways to combine images. You can use image prompting or the blend feature. And keep in mind that image prompting is only slightly different than blending. With image prompting, you can add words after the image and adjust the weight of the prompt. Now those might sound like big differences, but let's say you just wanted to combine two images without adding words then it would work just like blending. With blend mode, you can't add weights or words, but you can combine up to five pictures much more easily. Here's how you should remember it. If you wanna see what two pictures look like combined, use the blend feature. If you wanna see how you can transform a picture into something else, use image prompting. And secret option number three, if you wanna see what changes you can make to a particular photo, use the remix feature. I'll go over all of these in today's video. For image prompting, you're going to need to upload a picture to Discord first. Like here's a picture of me. Then what we're going to do is right click on the picture and hit copy image address. Back in Discord, you're gonna hit imagine like normal. You're going to hit control V or right click and hit paste. And then the link to your picture is gonna show up kinda weird, but don't worry. All you need to make sure is that it says .jpg or .png somewhere in the file. From here, you can write whatever words you want. Also, you'll notice after you generate the image, Midjourney will shrink the link to your picture to make it more accessible. So I gave Midjourney the link to my picture and I said graphic novel aesthetic. I don't know, maybe someone who doesn't know me would say this looks like me. I don't think it does, but that's not the point. Here's just one way to use image prompting. But maybe I thought those looked a little too real and I want it to be more of a graphic novel. So you can run the same prompt and add a weight to the words you want it to focus on. After graphic novel, I'll put double colons and then a number. This means graphic novel is two times as important as anything else in the prompt. I think these are looking a little more cartoony, but let's say I wasn't really happy with the likeness and I wanted Midjourney to focus more on me. I could increase the weight of the image, but let me show you some mistakes that might happen. Like here, I tried adding a weight of three to my picture, but look at these. Why didn't it work? First of all, it's because I didn't put a space for the two colons after the image. So you see, it didn't even use the picture of me because I screwed up the link. Though you might think, oh, you just need to put a space, but no, that is not how you add weights to an image. The double colons work for words, but if you want to add weight to your image, you need to use the parameter dash dash IW. Like here, the picture of me, graphic novel aesthetic dash dash IW2. You can use any number between 0.5 and 2. And now this means that the picture is two times as important as anything else in the prompt. Clearly these pictures are much more realistic with a much more realistic background. I think number three is not bad. It definitely doesn't look like me, but you got to remember that if you want to add weights to the picture, it's different than adding weights to the prompt. You might want to write that one down. Here's something you need to remember about image weights. Image weights are not individual. If you have two or more images in your prompt and you change the image weight, it's going to affect the images as a whole. You cannot include a weight for each image. When you put dash dash IW and then a number between 0.5 and 2, you're adding a weight to the images versus the prompt. Remember that. The next thing I want to show you is the difference between image prompting and blend mode. Spoiler alert, there's no difference. Let me clarify, there's no difference if you don't add any words. I took this picture and this picture and I image prompted both of them. Here are the results. Pretty cool, right? I think they're beautiful. But here are the results of blending them together. As you can see, there is no difference. I mean, Obviously, yes, a slight difference, they're not identical, but it's not like you're tapping into a whole new algorithm if you use the blending feature versus just image prompting both the links in one prompt. And I also want to show you that for image prompting in particular, re-rolling the prompt doesn't really matter. Normally, if you generate a picture in mid-journey and you re-roll it, you might get a whole new set of pictures. But if we hit re-roll here, you get these. Now granted, they are different. They're different cars, slightly different foregrounds, slightly different backgrounds, but they're not reimagining the two pictures together. You know what I mean? However, there are a couple things we can do. The first is add a stylized value. Now I'll warn you, stylized doesn't do that much, but let me show you some of the options. Here is S0. I think these are beautiful, but more importantly, they're different than if I had not included it. 
I think my personal favorite stylized value is around 300. That seems to be the right amount of extra style for me. Here's 500 and 1000. You see not the biggest differences, but check out what chaos does. Here's just a dash of chaos with a value of three. And I gotta tell you, chaos is really strong in version five. You can choose between zero and 100, and honestly, three might just be enough for you. Here's 10, and the pictures are starting to stray from each other. Here's 20, and they've broken off a bit. Uh, number four, that's gorgeous. I like number one a lot too. Uh, here's 30, and they are so different than what they used to be. So strong the chaos value is, and that's what it can do when you add them to your image prompts. Don't forget about this. And I want to show you here that re-rolling a chaos value does not give the same set of pictures. Here's chaos 30 again, very different from the previous chaos 30. So when you're generating with chaos, you're not going to get consistency from generation to generation. However, the variation within the generation is going to be consistent every time you do it. You know what I mean? Here's Chaos 40, and the pictures are starting to become a little out there. Now here's my personal suggestion. I don't think you should go above Chaos 40. Maybe 40 is even a little too much for you. And why I don't recommend going over Chaos 40 is right here. Here's Chaos 50. It is just not the same as the others. It's it's hard to believe that the two pictures we gave it created these. Mid-Journey goes way off the rails. Here's Chaos 60. I'm not saying these aren't beautiful, I think they're really cool looking, but they're probably not what you're gonna be looking for. Chaos 70 starts to get into the surreal element. Chaos 80 is a certified insane. Chaos 90, who even knows what we're looking at? Uh, <laughs> they're... They are borderline awful. And Chaos 100 is pure thoroughbred nonsense. Well, just don't, don't try this at home. It's a waste of your fast hours. Here's one little extra trick I like to try. A little bit of chaos and a little bit of stylize. Here's Chaos 14 S300. And I like these a lot. Chaos for variety and stylize for a little bit extra creativity. And here's where you can take it. Here's Chaos 50 S500. Again, just a little too chaotic for my taste. I recommend below 40 and you should be all right. Okay, here's something I have to show you. I think this is hilarious and just proof that image prompting is not an exact science. I took a picture of this lovely lady and I combined it with this cool, colorful picture of Batman. <laughs> Look what it made. Are these not hilarious? Number one is like the funniest picture I've ever seen. I think that is so, so strange. Why did it do that? What does it mean? I don't know. And if you have any clarifications on why image prompting would go so off the rails, please let me know. I'll get back to traditional image prompting in a bit, but I want to show you the power of just combining a bunch of pictures together. Look how cool these are. And all the prompt was is these three image links. First, we have an old man, black and white, and we have this cool little army poster barcode thing. And then we have this little neon sticker graphic. Blending those three together or image prompting those three together gave me these cool old men I love the contrast of the colors. I think these are really beautiful. Here's those same three prompts with a little bit of chaos at 20. And it's starting to give us some different looking pictures, which is very well welcomed. Chaos 50 S500, <laughs> you're gonna get some unique stuff. Chaos 30 is pretty sick. Chaos 50 is quite out there. C35 though, oh, wow, chef's kiss, these are beautiful. C35 S500, now that's a combo. Look at these, man, I love number three, that's so good. Now the reason why blending is so much easier is because you can just browse your files and click on the pictures you want. Like here, we'll go with that guy holding the bunny, we'll go with some graffiti, and it'll give you two off the start. If you want more, you have to click down here at the plus four more. And then up here, it'll bring the rest of your options. You can adjust the dimensions if you don't have a dimension specified in your suffix already. Keep that in mind. So we'll go image three and let's add this wacky one. We'll go image four and you know, let's add some pirates and then we'll go image five and just watch out. You might have to scroll over to see everything. We're going to add some fire 
and I feel like that's gonna take over the image, but let's find out. Enter. You might have to hit enter a couple of times. <laughs> what are these? Okay, it's kind of got the pointing pirate with a little bit of the beard from the rabbit guy. It's got some colorful graffiti and some fire here. Uh, these are strange, and I don't think you could ever get these pictures just from prompting, and that's one of the reasons why image prompting or blending is so powerful. Let me show you another way you could use image prompting or blending. I want you to take some sort of cool wallpaper background. Here I chose a Memphis pattern I generated. I freaking love these so much. And I took this vintage Polaroid of some pirates hanging out. And when you put them together, you can get something cool like this. Super unique, super difficult to even explain into words what you'd prompt to get anything like this. Yeah, <laughs> here they are. Here are some more examples of different patterns with different groups of people. I just love the effect it makes because it actually blends them together. And even though I was blending those, you can also image prompt the weird background with any words you like. I took this Memphis pattern and I wrote Batman. Like these are thick. Number four is unreal. I have another tip for you when it comes to image prompting. I took this same pattern and I image prompted it with futuristic vehicle. I'd say these are decent. But there's just one word we can add to really spruce up the photos. Same image prompt, same subject, but I added the word unsplashed and look what it does. Oh my gosh. Absolutely in love with number two. Kind of want to make it the thumbnail. I'm a little bit torn on it. Unsplash is just a way to get a cinematic view of your pictures. You could specify a camera type. You could say cinematic. You could say dramatic lighting. You could mention a camera angle. There's a few different ways to get the cinematic look, but Unsplash gets you there really quickly. Highly recommend it. Let's dive a little deeper into image prompting and see what we can get using this picture of an old man. We're going to keep it simple. Go old man cartoon. And you see how it doesn't take that picture and turn it into a cartoon? Rather, it takes the subject, an old man, and keeps similar features to the picture you provided while transforming it into something new, like a cartoon. Super powerful, super different than blending, and super different than the remix feature. Here's the image prompt, and the words are an old man wearing sunglasses. It doesn't take that exact old man and put sunglasses on him. However, it takes someone who looks similar and makes a picture of them wearing sunglasses. Here's a similar idea as before. Cartoon old man anime with a weight of two. I would say that these are a very distinct illustrative style. Look at that black outline around the old man's ears. Kind of makes them pop. I think that's really beautiful and how adding weights to words in an image prompt can really adjust the photo. Now you saw the old man with sunglasses through an image prompt. Let me show you how the remix does it. And just one reason why remixing isn't that recommended by me is that it just takes a few extra steps to do. First, you have to find the original image in Discord. Then you need to make sure remix is turned on by hitting forward slash remix or prefer remix. Normally the variation button would just make more similar pictures, but with remix turned on, when we hit make variations, a text box will pop up and we could change this to an elderly man wearing sunglasses. Okay, I actually wrote wearing cool sunglasses. You see how it is that same old man, only this time he's wearing sunglasses. Whereas before, when we image prompted, it gave us an old man wearing sunglasses who was just kind of similar to this guy. So again, use image prompting if you want to imagine a picture in a new style, whereas use remix if you want to make small adjustments to an existing picture. I like number one here a lot. I think that looks good. And as you can see, it's not perfect in every one. Number three is pretty broken. Like, look, that, that looks great. And you would never know that this wasn't the original picture. Here's one more example of image prompting versus remix with that old man. I image prompted the picture of the old guy as a young man. And look what it gave me. I'd say these are pretty great. I'm not necessarily saying these look exactly like the old man, but I think these turned out pretty well. Whereas I'll show you what happened when I remix the pictures. They didn't turn out very good. So instead of image prompting, I went to the picture of the old man and I remixed it saying a portrait shot of a young man with a beard. And look what it did. These are, <laughs> these are awful. Remixing is good when you want to add small details. Remixing does not work very well when you want to change the picture. 
you can either change some words in the prompt or you could erase the prompt completely and write something new. Here's what happens when you erase the prompt and just write a young man. Again, really awful. I don't recommend erasing a prompt. You want to keep the heart of your prompt and just make some small adjustments like wearing sunglasses, not necessarily changing the age of the person. It's a lot to take in, I know. Hey, look here are my homies. Should that be the thumbnail? I, I don't know. Ah, oh, look at the car. Ah, oh, it's so good. I don't know. Batman's pretty good too. All right, here's a big tip for image prompting. We're gonna focus on the old man and we're gonna see what we can create when we include some weights, negative prompting, and some chaos. Here's the old man with the prompt cell shaded anime. The first thing you should notice is that I didn't include the word old man in my prompt. It's just cell shaded anime and it gives us these. What else can we add to the prompt? I tried the words vibrant, colorful, cell shaded anime. I wanted to get away from the black and white and I don't think these did a very good job. Although I like number three, it's just a cool picture. Now take a look at these. We include the words an old man to really harness the subject and say vibrant, colorful, cell shaded anime. I don't know if these are vibrant and colorful, but they're stylistic and reminiscent of the subject we provided with the image prompt. One step further, we're going to add a weight of two to vibrant, colorful, cell shaded anime starting to be a little more stylistic while still maintaining the subject. And here's the next piece of the prompt you can try. We're gonna add in dash dash no, which is negative prompting, and we're gonna take away the black and white. I don't know how well this prompt worked, but the idea is simple. If you have an image you want to change, not only should you write the new style, but you should negative prompt the style you're trying to change away from. Do you know what I mean? We had a black and white photo. Not only do we want it vibrant and colorful, we want to say no to the black and white. Here's just cell shaded anime, no mention of color, but we negative prompted the black and white. I think these look pretty sick. Not necessarily what I was going for, but mid journey surprises you sometimes. And the last thing I think you could add to your image prompts is a bit of chaos. Here's the picture of the old man, the words, an old man, vibrant, colorful, cell shaded anime with a weight of two, negative prompting, black and white with chaos 25. And it gives us this variety. I like some of these styles a lot. Chaos is going to stray from your prompt that give you a lot of variety. And you might find one image out of the four that really speaks to you. Same thing, but this time you could add in some style, which is S500, much more old man, quite cartoony. Sure, we lost some of the color, but it's not black and white, and I think that's pretty important. Remember all of those techniques when you're trying to experiment with an image prompt yourself. And the very last example of image prompting that I want to show you came from a cool suggestion I got in the comments. It was from Welcome to the Golden Page. They told me about taking a composition you like and then changing the subject of the image using image prompting. So here's a wide angle of a king sitting on a throne. Unsplash. I liked number one. So you upscale it, you click on it, it expands, you right click, hit copy image address, and then you're gonna paste that into your prompt. Here's the link to the image, and then I went with Superman sitting on a throne. By the way, this was the exact suggestion from the comment. I thought it was a really good example. So now these are pretty cool pictures, but they're not exactly Superman sitting on a throne. So what can we do? We can split it up using multi prompts and add weights to the words we want. Here's Superman colon colon two sitting on a throne, which means the word Superman is now twice as important. And you can see already, these are much more Superman. The logo is right there in every picture. But how far can we push that? Here's Superman three sitting on a throne. A little different, I like number two a lot. Superman with a weight of four sitting on a throne. Superman with a weight of five sitting on a throne. The image prompt is still a big part of it, but don't forget to add weights to any additional words you add if you really wanna tweak the generation. Okay, wait, I have one last technique you can use with image prompting. And this comes from a comment from Dr. Savage. Thanks, Doc. They said they took an image they knew was good, stopped it at a particular percentage, around 30, and then combined it with the fully rendered image. This was just a way to think outside the box. So look, I have this cool set of pictures. Psychedelic superhero in intricate armor, synthwave colors, action pose, all time favorite prompt. And here's the seed number. So I prompt the same, include the seed number, and I say stop at 40. Here's what it gives you. A very blurry in progress picture. 
So now we're gonna take the blurry number one and combine it with the one that was fully made. Blending them together and here are the results. I think it's cool, I think it's unique. I think that haziness from the blur is actually really aesthetic and I'm kind of a fan. I like this technique, it's a little out there, but just keep it in mind, you might find it useful. I'll be honest, there are a few more things you can do with image prompting, but this video is long enough. Maybe I could dive more into it later if you're interested. Please leave a like on this video if you've learned something new. I hope you're doing well. Take care, and I'll see you next time. Peace.